Right, a little word of warning before you watch tonight. I hope you've eaten because you could get hungry. Why? It's a celebration of all things food, specifically homegrown food brands and, of course, the extraordinary Emirati talent looking to push uh, the food industry here at the moment. So let's see what we're serving up. We kick things off with something quintessentially Emirati. Dua checks out Arabian Tea House. Yeah, Mina's Market. We are checking out a brand new spot to here in the city. And of course, Khalid is down there. Uh, looking forward to all that. Plus, we're looking at how brands are going international. And we're meeting some real, real inspiring individuals. And I'm really looking forward to this one tonight. I know that, um, you know, love my food and love the food industry here. And I love the way it's grown over the last 20 years since I've been here as well. And I literally, 20 years ago, would not have been sat here talking about the extraordinary talent that A, call this place home, but are also using it as a launch pad at the moment. Uh, a launch pad for, for new, innovative ways of consuming food, creating food, and taking it to a wider audience. Dubai, in my opinion, is definitely one of the culinary capitals of the world. And I'm probably gonna get a little slack for saying this, but I've been to Italy, I like the Italian food in Dubai more. I've been to India, I like the Indian food in <laughs> Dubai more. I've been to Lebanon, I like the shawarmas here just better. I'm probably going to get into a lot of trouble for saying <laughs> this, but everything in Dubai, especially when it comes to the food, is just better. And it's said that over the next 20 years, the food industry is growing so exponentially that it's going to create over 20,000 job opportunities and uh, with very high paying salaries as well. So it's definitely a sector that's growing very, very quickly in this part of the world. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's been also a huge focus lately on producing locally as well. You know, I think since the pandemic, a lot of us have kind of wanted to know exactly where our food comes from. So there's been a focus on that food security as well. And how better than to go local? Yeah. The investment into food security has been phenomenal here. Um, the establishment uh, of a dedicated ministry for that, a dedicated minister following that as well. So no, you're quite right. So mm. the investment into that. And I think that's also the thing here is that, you know, no big surprise that you get great entrepreneurs in food industries the world over. But it's the opportunity to follow your dreams here and the fact that you've got that support system, you've got that encouragement that you might not find in other parts of the world. The sector is uh, expected to add almost a $10 billion boost and there's going to be job opportunities for food scientists, geneticists, I don't know how to pronounce that correctly, <laughs> nutritionists to traditional farmers and food technologists. So I'm very excited to see what more the city will have to offer in the culinary scene. Very exciting times indeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed it is. Now, uh, you got the three of us throughout the evening tonight. Uh, apologies for that in advance, but but worry not, we've got a true expert in the business joining us as well. In fact, we've got some amazing guests joining us throughout the course of the show. But time now, and each of them founders, uh, each of them insp inspirational uh, in the industry. Time now for us to introduce to you our guest co-host for the night. Hi, I'm Zainab El Musawi, the founder of To The Moon and Back Coffee here in Dubai. And I can't wait to join you at the studio in a bit. Zena will join us in just a second, but before that, Faris went down to check out the Arabian Tea House, a fan favorite to know more about their history and even got to sample some of their best Emirati dishes. Let's take a look. I'm here at one of the most iconic restaurants in Dubai. I'm here at Arabian Tea House, specifically at the Jumeirah Archaeological Site. And I'm so honored to be here with the founders of Arabian Tea House. I'm here with Rania and Ali Reyes. Guys, I mean, to meet you guys is amazing. Uh, my first question is, how did this all come about? How did you decide to start up the Arabian Tea House? Actually, we've started like 20 years ago. We decided to bring all the nice food of the UAE on the table. We were one of the first tenants to raise our hand and say, okay, we can do something here that attracts people. So for people who aren't really familiar with Emirati cuisine, they don't know what to come and order when they come here, what would you th say is the thing that they have to try when they uh, come to Arabian Tea House? I would recommend them to, to start with the starters and, and try the sambusa vegetables with the beautiful dip. Um, I got some people from Brazil and they come and they want to eat machbus. 
so yes, all the food is good, but you have to try the main uh, the main things, which is Harry's, Majboos, Salona, Balalit, and enjoy. But you were telling me, Ali, that you're very selective about locations. Where we currently are is a Jumeirah archaeological site, and I was surprised to know there's an archaeological site just a few meters that way. Can you tell us a little bit about your process when it comes to picking locations? This place where we are now today, it's 1,000 years old. So this place signifies a lot about Dubai's history and trade. So what you see today, it's actually a, a, a ripple of what Dubai has been. And not many people realize that this was a town that had residential, had hotels, has mosques, has a, a market. So, and it expands quite a distance. It's, it's a couple of kilometer length. It is a true Emirati design. The benches, or the ceilings that you can see using the simple material that is being imported from East Africa. The white cushions that you use, we use it on the floor. When it comes to the plates, the cutlery and crockery, these plates have been around since the 1950s. So the people who have this kind of plates with the, the, the way it looks, you have to be well to do to be able to afford a plate like this. However, we didn't forget the average person the average person would use these, you know, uh, tent glasses. It keeps the water cool. For us to have true Emirati cuisine, we have a tree. It's called Rafa, which is right outside this uh, restaurant. Raf is used to be one of the main diets for everyone. It's a tree. It's a very well-protected tree today by the government and it used to be used as a, as a meal. Rania Ali, thank you so much for having us here and make sure if you haven't yet to check out the Arabian Tea House, it's amazing. Thanks guys. Amazing, the Arabian Tea House, just one of a number of brands that are attracting huge crowds. I remember when we were down at Expo, um, at the end of last year, huge numbers of crowds heading uh, into the Arabian Tea House on a daily basis. Now, today's guest co-host is an Emirati barista who founded her cafe to share and not just the booming coffee culture in the city, but the increasing passion for all things space. Uh, a quirky cafe, if you like, hidden in a secret Jumeirah garden. Please welcome to the show our guest co host Zainab Al Masawi, the founder of To the Moon and Back. Cheers, Zainab. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you for having me over. Listen, um, obviously, the UAE space program has been one that has been hugely celebrated, huge amount of excitement in recent time. And alongside that, the cafe and coffee culture here has just exploded as well. Was this, a, was this a marriage made in heaven of two great passions of yours? Um, honestly, it started, has nothing to do with space, but <laughs> then it just like grew organically because that's how I like things to be. You know, it's like more on the artistic side. It started as a passion for specialty coffee and then from there it grew as a, a food as well. And then the space was just evolved around it. And then we were lucky, I guess, when the UAE adopted that space program. And that was amazing. It's interesting you say that because we, we, we often hear about how competitive the cafe and the coffee market is, not just here in Dubai, the region as a whole at the moment, huge potential when it comes to coffee and cafes. Do you need to have something a little bit different, a little bit niche as well to set yourself apart from the crowd? I would say yes, but I'm the type of person who just focuses on what I'm doing. So I don't look left and right. I like to just like focus because I'm very passionate about what I'm doing. And I think that's, that's just good enough for me. Uh, the passion just translates itself in what I'm doing and the customers do appreciate that. And it just like projects on what I'm doing as well and what I'm offering. Mm. Zainab, let's talk about those customers because I believe it started five years ago, your passion for yes. this. And they're not just customers, they're a community that you've really created with To The Moon and Back. Tell me about that community. Okay. Um, I think I'm really lucky to have a very supportive community around me. Um, so just long story short, uh, I lived in Australia for 10 years and that's when I started my journey as a barista. Mm. And by the time I was back in 2000, like start of 2018, I had no friends, uh, no one. So it was a little bit scary mm. so that was part of a challenge as well like I was thinking like how can I attract 
the customer base because yes, I was a barista, but I, I never owned my own business before that. So it was very, uh, I, I took a risk and it was very challenging and scary. So this is why I'm saying like, I was very lucky to have this community just being formed around me and everybody's been very supportive and almost everybody knows everybody by now at TTMB. I love that. I love you that. Nice and cozy. Yeah. <laughs> You spoke about support. Is that what inspired you to, tell, to, to collaborate with a lot of local artists and have pop-ups? Uh, it's something that I really believe in. I believe that we have a lot of good talents here, like local talents, and we just need some people need to need the support or like they just like need that push. Mm. And for me to having that platform to have a space uh, I just think like why not and that's not only exclusive to coffee and food like if you look at the bits and pieces around TTMB uh, you will find even like the pottery has been made first with someone like from the community and then like even the design the illustrations or, or like people from the community that I have collaborated with to bring the brand together. And these are some of the illustrations that you've brought along, along with the cups and uh, and the designs on your box as well. So it's it's a community collaboration. Yes, yeah? definitely. And that's one of my favourite illustrations because it translates. Like if you look at the cup uh, illustration, so it's done by one of my friends, and it tells the story of that recovery period after COVID and how the community was there after that difficult time and still being there supportive as always as if nothing happened and just like they're putting like pulling TTMB together and uh, it was just like a very heartwarming experience to be honest. Mm. So Zainab, TTMB five years now, where are you planning to expand? What are your plans for the future? So definitely there's an expansion plan. I'll keep it as a mystery. I won't go into <laughs> so much details because I like to do something first, but definitely uh, there are expansion plans in progress at the moment. Uh, my goal is to be self-sustainable brand. So uh, for now we have our own like uh, products, like uh, the food products, the coffee. We're collaborating with some local brands as well as some uh, guests from all over the world in terms of the coffee beans, mm. uh, the farmers that we're collaborating with, and the, even the ingredients. We're focusing on uh, local ingredients as much as possible. And uh, maybe in the future we will be roasting our own coffee as well. So that's something I can reveal, but then uh, there's much more yet to come. It's a coffee shop. It's about the coffee, isn't it? So what sets your coffee apart from the others? So I think it's uh, like my being like having a hands on experience when it comes to that, because I have been a barista right. in like multiple cafes, mainly started in Melbourne and Australia. So I do have like a depth understanding uh, for the coffee beans, like where the origins from the farmers and like a very much focus on fair trade. So these are all elements that I, I think I, and I really uh, deeply believe that are very important when it comes to like harvesting the coffee beans, where exactly you're coming from and then until they reach the cup that you're serving to the customer. Amazing. So, yeah. And Zainab, maybe making your own coffee beans very soon. There you go. <laughs> yes. Heard it, heard it here first. Zainab will stick with us as we get more experts on in the local homegrown brand space. And speaking of local, we are focusing on local artists in this city as we take a look at a performer who is making waves in Dubai. Hey guys, we're the Arc. My name's Carrie, all the way from Scotland. We've got Ariel here from Argentina. Wilson from Colombia, and of course, Wally from Philippines. We're quite an eclectic band, but tonight we're going to do something special for you guys. Kind of a little bit of a funky vibe. Now, after the break, we talk to the founder of a homegrown artisanal gelato brand, focusing on natural handmade and bold flavors that are specific to the region. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> 